Let's now install and configure VNC. VNC will simply allow you to use the Raspberry Pi desktop from your own computer. This is great, so you don't need to only use the terminal with command lines and you also don't need to have a monitor plugged to your Raspberry Pi. And even if you have a monitor, you will see that it's sometimes more convenient to work without it. So the reason why we set up SSH just before is simply because we need to access the Raspberry Pi through SSH so we can actually set up VNC. So that's what we are going to do here. So if SSH is not working for you, please go back to the previous lesson. And now I am going to uh, connect to the Raspberry Pi via SSH. So SSH, then you put the username, which is Pi here, at and the IP address. So of course, this will be different for you. Okay, press enter and the password is still Raspberry. Okay, uh, don't worry about the warning message here about password. We are just going to change the password later. So here to enable VNC and make it work correctly, there are a few different steps that we need to do in the order. So please follow along. First, you are going to type, so here you are in a terminal inside the Raspberry Pi. You are going to type sudo space raspi dash config. Okay, and if you see that, for example, if I press tab here, I can have the auto completion to make sure it is the right command. So sudo will make you run the command as an administrator on the machine, which is required here. And raspi config is just so you can get access to the configuration. So you press enter and it will bring you to that uh, menu here. So you can navigate using the arrow keys from your keyboard and you can also press enter to validate an option. So you are going first to go to five interfacing options. Press enter, go to VNC and you are going to press yes. Would you like the VNC server to be enabled? So it is already installed. You are just going to enable it. So yes. Okay. It's enabled. Yes. Okay. And then you're going to press the uh, right arrow to go to finish. Okay. And what you can do is sudo reboot. So reboot, the command reboot will simply reboot your Raspberry Pi. As you can see, when we reboot, we are losing the connection to the Raspberry Pi because of course the Raspberry Pi is shutting down. And now we are going, we are back to the, the terminal from Windows in my case. So you have to wait a little bit because the Raspberry Pi is, is rebooting and the SSH connection will be available soon. Okay, so I'm going to just use the same command as before and put the password. So you may have to wait a little bit before you have that. Okay, just the time so the Raspberry Pi can boot. And now I'm going to go back to the configuration. So sudo raspi config. So here the VNC server is enabled, but uh, it will not just work. Uh, like that so you need to go to boot options okay and select also desktop CLI again so CLI means command line interface so basically when you boot the Raspberry Pi you only have a command line interface and if you want to use VNC you need to enable the desktop interface so you can use the desktop here if you want just to use desktop and need to log in every time or you can use the desktop auto login so basically when you're in, you don't need to log in again, which I'm going to use it here. Okay, so now you can press finish again and you will have a message, would you like to reboot now? So you press yes and now the Raspberry Pi will reboot again. So I'm making all of the steps one by one and every time we reboot, so we are sure that nothing is going wrong. So here, as you can see, I have to wait. Okay, nothing is happening when I do the SSH command. And you will see that at some point, the password will appear. Yes, so now it means we can type password raspberry and we are in again. And let's, so you can press the top, uh, the arrow key to go up. Okay, 
So you can just go back to the different command you have run before. And the last thing we need to do for now is to go to advanced options here and go to resolution. Okay, this is simply because uh, for some reasons and some cases, if you set the default resolution like it is here, you may not be able to make the VNC work. So you may have to change the resolution here and put not the default, but another one. So which resolution to choose here? Well, simply choose the resolution of the computer you're using right now. So if you are using a laptop, for example, I'm using a laptop with a full HD screen monitor. So I'm just choosing that option. If you're using any other uh, monitor, you can just uh, choose whatever uh, resolution you want. Just don't pick the default one. I'm going to choose that. Press enter. Okay, the resolution is set. Okay, and now I'm going to press finish and would you like to reboot again? Yes. Okay, so those are the three steps we need to do so we can enable VNC and make it work. So now we have set up VNC on the Raspberry Pi. So this is the server side. What we need to do now is to get the client. So here I'm using Windows. I need to get a client so I can actually connect to the Raspberry Pi and get access to the desktop. And to do that, we are going to actually uh, install the real VNC, uh, VNC viewer, okay? So you can go to that URL here, realvnc.com. You can simply also type VNC viewer, real VNC, and it's basically the first link. And as you can see, this is multi-platform, so you can choose whatever OS you're using right now, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. As you can see, there is a Raspberry Pi here, but don't mix things up, okay? If you choose this, this is the client to connect to the Raspberry Pi. So if you choose this, basically it means that you are controlling a Raspberry Pi from another Raspberry Pi, okay? Here we are controlling the Raspberry Pi from uh, Windows here because my laptop is running Windows at the moment. So I'm going to choose the Windows client and simply download it. Okay, save it, and when it is done, you can, okay, I already downloaded it before, so you can just run it and go through the installation setup. And once it is installed, you simply have to launch the application, okay, and you will get that view here. So, what are we going to do now? First, make sure that your Raspberry Pi has been reboot, so it is powered on, it is running. And also make sure that yeah, I'm going back to my network configuration. Uh, you should have the correct configuration because you could just previously connect to SSH. But make sure you always have your computer and your Raspberry Pi on the same network. Otherwise, you won't be able to uh, connect to the Raspberry Pi from your laptop. So now I'm going to go here to File and New Connection. Or you can just press Ctrl N if you want. And here I'm going to put the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so really make sure that you note that somewhere so you don't forget it. And I'm giving a name, this is just a name so we can recognize the, the connection here, just Raspberry Pi. You can put whatever name you want here, okay. And let's click on OK. And now I'm going to double click on that. Okay, you may have a warning like that. And let's, don't worry about that. Let's click on continue. If you don't have the warning, it's fine too. And now you have to give the username and password. So the username here is Pi and the password is Raspberry. Okay, just like we uh, did for SSH, okay. You can choose to remember the password or not. I'm not going to do that now because we are going to change the password later. Okay, you can now have access to your Raspberry Pi desktop without any external monitor. Great, isn't it? Now stay with me for the last configuration steps which I will cover in the next lesson.